So my main problem is this. Injure yourself, burn your house or both. It's weird. Yeah, I bet my wife will have so many questions about this. Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about electric unicycles again, about the veteran links in particular and about some safety concerns that I had and I'm happy to say that I fixed them and I will talk about it a little bit later in the video as well. So long story short, some time ago I posted on Facebook that I overcharged my links and asked for advice uh, how to fix the problem because it's been charging up to 151.6 volts and it should charge up to 151 0.2 volts and it caused me some problems because every time i start riding i'm going downhill and i live on a literal mountain and i'm not exaggerating it is a literal mountain i need to ride about a kilometer down the mountain uh to get to the trail where i can ride in the flatland so my main problem is this this is a downhill and it's crazy it's probably 800 meters or even more going down and during that uh, downhill ride the wheel will get a lot of energy a couple of volts for sure if it happens then that your wheel is charged to its full capacity, uh, well, you have a lot of problems with that wheel and I'll explain you why. So the idea is very simple. Imagine that this glass cup is your battery. Let's fill it with the water, which will represent uh, the full battery. So now this cup is full and it represents a fully charged battery to 100%. Let's do an experiment. So this hand represents the regenerated energy that you will recover when you break. I needed something to weight it down and the only thing that I found was this hand. I know, I know, it's weird, but it will do the job. This glass, which represents a battery, is full. So if we carefully submerge this object in the water, the water surface will stretch and it will be fine without any spillage. But if we suddenly drop this object in the water, it will cause water to spill all around. And this is how your cutout would look like when the battery doesn't have any additional room for the regenerated energy. Nasty stuff. Yeah, I bet my wife will have so many questions about this. Well, it was so easy to explain and as easy to understand, let me show you how it affects me in the real world conditions and why it's such a big deal for me and probably for you too. Okay, the current voltage is 150.1, which is a little bit too high. And for the record, it's not even halfway down. So if you take a look, it's over there. So I need to go like about another half of the way down here. So you may ask, all right, what's the big deal? It showed full, so everything is fine. Well, uh, it's not because the last time uh, I've tried it, it started beeping on me and it turned off. So the next thing after that full indication is a wheel beeping on you for about 10 seconds and you have about 10 seconds to jump off the wheel and then it will turn off and then you need to turn it on and spend some energy and then it will do just fine. But that 10 seconds, is kind of a little bit tricky because sometimes it's just not enough time to stop somewhere and turn on turn off the wheel and find a place where you can just do a little bit of donuts to spend some energy off your wheel and then continue going so it's better to fix it and now i will show you how to and before we started fixing anything i would like just to mention that it's not the problem of the links it's the problem of the charger of the links that it's being sold with and in my opinion this is not the best charger at least not the best quality charger that's, that's for sure so yeah it is what it is and i think the best outcome from this situation would be if uh, lipper Kim allowed people to adjust the voltage number through the app i think but well again it is what it is to start you will need two items you unplugged om charger and the voltmeter or multimeter we'll need it just in a moment remove the four screws on the side that i'm showing on the video and then remove the top lid if you have done everything correctly you will see this side of the charger 
At this moment, you absolutely need to make sure that your charger is unplugged. Electricity is not a joke and you don't want to injure yourself, burn your house or both because it's really not great. Don't repeat after me, this video is for educational purposes only, so let's continue. We are looking for a potentiometer that will help us to adjust the voltage. On the Lynx charger it looks like a little screw on top of a blue controller, exactly like this. Now it's time to start the main procedure. Turn on the voltmeter and switch it to DC. Plug in the charger and ensure that it is working. The green LED should be on. Take the plug and insert the black pin into the circuit number 2 and then the red pin into the circuit number 4. It should show you the current voltage. I have already modified my charger previously, so it is now showing 149.3 volts. Turn off the charger and before starting make sure that the green LED is off. Let's slightly increase the voltage to keep it at a practical level. Remember turning the potentiometer clockwise will increase the voltage and turning it counterclockwise will decrease it. It is not overly sensitive which is a good thing because we can make very precise adjustments if necessary. I turn it about 180 degrees clockwise to increase the voltage. Now turn on the charger and measure the voltage in the same way I explained it before. Great. It is now showing 149.6 volts, which is a good number for me and will equate to about 98-99% to of full charge. Now let's put it back together and it's time to test. Okay, I will leave it for now and I will return in an hour or so when it will end charging and we'll take a look what is going on with the battery. Eventually. Okay, it's been about an hour. Let's see what is going on there with the battery. And it has charged up to 149.7 volts, uh, which is in the ballpark of what we set on the charger. And it's not charging more than that. All right, so the only one thing that I want to check before we finish is how it did balance the cells within the battery. And the battery is balanced pretty well. This is for the left battery, this is for the right battery. And they are healthy and everything looks just normal. All right, I hope this video helped you to understand why you should or should not lower the voltage of your wheel and how to adjust it and stuff like that. And either you are affected or not by that issue that I talked about in this video. Either way, thank you for watching, thank you for your time, see you later. Okay, so while I'm editing this video, I got some really good news from uh, Liperkim, uh, from the veteran Lynx uh, manufacturers. So they released a new firmware that allows you to adjust the maximum voltage through this software. They are going to spread that firmware to other wheels after they finish testing it with the veteran Lynx. So yeah, all in all, good news.